Welcome to The Deciding Point, presented by Hard True, our Crack Rackets weekly breakdown of the biggest storylines from throughout the tennis world. This week, we answer the question on the minds of every tennis fan. Which players are going to emerge from Wimbledon with the titles, the 2021 event just around the corner? We only had three weeks of grass court warm-up events to get acclimated to the surface, but on today's podcast, I want to focus on that question, who are going to emerge with the titles, talk a little bit about the Olympic Games on the horizon as well. With that in mind, Westoff, roll the credits. Let's get to today's show. Now for my top five men's singles contenders headed into Wimbledon. The prohibitive number one, and it's not particularly close, is Novak Djokovic. And this is the most confident I've felt about Djokovic since probably that 2016 Australian Open when he was fresh off of the 2015 season, clearly playing the best tennis of his career you know, there's no Nadal in the draw. It's not the same Roger Federer. We just haven't seen a Medvedev, a Tsitsipas, a Zverev, a Berrettini. Any of those guys have prolonged success on the grass courts because there was no 2020 grass court season. And then, of course, you have all of the metrics. You know, there's the case for why not anyone else. The perhaps most notable thing is why Novak Djokovic is just because, simply put, he's proven it already this season. When it matters most, he's better than everyone else. He has a gear that no one else in the men's game can reach right now. When you look for him, 26-3 and three overall in the 2021 calendar. He won the Australian Open. He won the French Open to win all four in the calendar slam. Uh, the win the calendar slam, I suppose, is very much in play. That's not an opportunity at this point in his career Novak Djokovic is going to take lightly. And again, by the metrics... First serve win percentage is up this season. Second serve win percentage is up this season. He's playing as well as he was in those 2015, 2016 seasons. And, you know, again, it's clearly not the same Novak Djokovic, but the gear he hit in that French Open quarterfinal, semifinal, and final against Berrettini, Nadal, and CT Pass successful uh successively. It's just a different level than anyone else in the game has hit this season. We get to his, I mean, it's not his best surface because hard courts is, but he beat Roger Federer on these grass courts when Federer was playing his best tennis. And again, from a confidence level, Djokovic is just on another planet. And if Tsitsipas can't beat him from two sets to love up at the French Open, I don't know how anyone beats him here at Wimbledon. He's your prohibitive number one. I mentioned this on an earlier segment here. So if you want to hear my case for Matteo Berrettini and you're watching on YouTube, go check that out. If you're listening to this in podcast form, you guys know my thoughts on him. He's my number two player. Number three, I'm going to go with Daniil Medvedev, who I've at least seen you know, beat a Stan Wawrinka, beat seeds at this Wimbledon before. And, you know, his three losses in his three main draw appearances, 2017, 2018, 2019, they were five set losses. And obviously Medvedev's a far better player now than he was then. You look at the metrics this year, every metric for him has improved. He's one of six men's players in that top 15 club to be top 15 in both hold and break percentage in the tennis abstract stats leaderboard. Uh, He's got the big first serve to win points easily. He's such a good returner. He's able to make matches physical in the way Djokovic sometimes can on these grass scores. And when I say sometimes, I mean Medvedev can sometimes make the match physical the way Djokovic always can on these grass scores. And then again, the three out of five set format, Medvedev doesn't wear down. He doesn't go away and he just has so many different ways to beat you. He's such a tough matchup regardless of surface. I think the fact that he made the semifinal or the quarterfinals, excuse me, of Roland Garros after having no success on the the clay courts in the warm up to that run and then, you know, for him to lose his first round match but take the wild card into Mallorca, reach the quarterfinals, fun match for him against Kasparov coming up. I just think he's got some really good tennis in him. Three out of five sets, always going to benefit him. He's in my number three spot. Oh, after that, it gets tough. I'll throw Zverev at four just because three out of five sets, guy's a beast. Six, you know, six consecutive round of 16s or later, just by virtue of being there, I suppose he's got a shot to be in the mix. And then at the number five spot right now, I mean, Tsitsipas probably belongs there just out of respect, but Marin Cilic, 
Andre Rublev. I would say they both belong in the tier. So I'll give you seven guys for a five name list. Chilich, Tsitsipas, Rublev round out that second tier of players. And I do think Berrettini may even be in a tier of his own. And may go Djokovic, massive drop. Berrettini, smallest drop. Medvedev, Zverev, Tsitsipas, Chilich, Rublev. Those would be the seven guys for me. Now, again, there's such a big gap between Novak Djokovic and everyone else, and I really will be shocked if he does not win this Grand Slam event. But, you know, Tsitsipas, with that serve, his willingness to move forward, the hubris he plays with, the guy's a shot maker. And in biggest stages, brightest lights, he plays his best semifinals or better at three of the past four slams. Expect him to be in the later rounds. I'm expecting a Rublev bounce back the weight of that shot. My sneaky picks would be like a guy like FAA if he's playing his best. I haven't mentioned Roger Federer. I need to see him prove it. I know he won his first three matches at the French Open, and I know Wimbledon, obviously, better surface for a guy who isn't trying to play long physical points, but... I need to see it before I can believe it. FAA's fine loss in three sets in the warm-up event. Roger's in my top 10. He's not in my top five. But overall, it's Djokovic uh, in the lead. Everyone else chasing from a distance. But again, that distance, that chasing is what makes these Grand Slams so exciting. So I'm still expecting a lot of fun at the 2021 Wimbledon.